This is the Team Objection Podcast for October 11th, 2018, episode 363. And we have, as promised last week, a new segment for you, especially since all four of us are here. There's there's this one down there, and then there's the one over there, and then there's that one over there. We're all here. So it's time for a new segment. We haven't had a new segment in a while. And in theory, we haven't really had a mainstay new segment in quite some time. We've had a couple we've done off and on, like now, listen here, or this but, but... They haven't really latched on as much as we might have thought. So we're going to try a new one today and see how it goes. Maybe it's great. Maybe it's miserable. I don't know. This Never butt. know. I don't remember Until that one. I don't remember this butt. You weren't did, here for it. Yeah, I don't think you ever did one with us. The world doesn't That's revolve around you, Dave. It's oh, actually it, really fun. It's a good segment. Oh, is it just show a picture of a butt and it said, like, do you like this butt? Yes. 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 Or that butt? No. Yep. This butt? <laughs> Hell yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Six times yes. I think we've only done that segment twice. Yeah, we should do it again. It is fun. Mm. It's we good. Should. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, introduce Dave to it and see how that goes. Today's segment is just going to be called Hall of Fame. And there's no need for a fancy naming convention. It's essentially going to be the Team Objection podcast. Look at individuals, be they fictitious or real, celebrity or not, and deciding whether or not they should be honored by us, the esteemed voting panel, as some of the best of all time. And, and they go in the time capsule. <laughs> yes, we shove them in the time we capsule. Stuff them in <laughs> and... There's no oxygen. So they're we basically need to vote horrible people in there so they die a suffocating death. No, Correct. they need to be eternalized, Dave, forever. <laughs> so future generations can see their skeletons. Number one, Kim Jong un. <laughs> there you go. This is basically like all of our old segments back in the At The Buzzer days where half of the segments you needed to do the opposite of what you were supposed to do and it was very confusing. Feely, no, you can't be on the panel. Go away. Right. We also don't I think play... she wants to be in the Hall of Fame. We also well, don't... We're good. not playing She'll this butt with her either. We're only putting <laughs> not terrible cats in the Hall of Fame. So <laughs> yeah. No, she's the best cat. Yeah, Look no. at her. Cats that don't interrupt the show go into the Hall of Fame. Tell her there's she's no so room cute. for assholes in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> there might be though what if somebody's a really good actor but they're an asshole and they still manage to make the cut you know? I think that will factor into our voting I think so it absolutely it's true. Will. so we'll talk more about the breakdown when the actual results come in but just understand the bar for this is higher than time capsule time capsule is an aggregate 7 this you have to have an 8 or better which may be tough on a panel of 4 remember it's going to be an average so one person who really dislikes something could tank the whole thing these are high stakes. We're never going to have anyone in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's going to be a great segment. We'll have someone. It's going to be a nice empty building with a red carpet leading up to it and a whole bunch of people just milling about outside. I like to think it they're is. Team Objection Network knighted. And we're going to have a, a, a certain round table of knights composed of these Hall of Famers. Mm-hmm. It's going to be awesome. It is crazy to think that three of us could vote ten and the other could be like, nope, one and a half, not in. Sorry. Yep. That's all it takes. That's oof, Personal vendettas could have a huge impact. But then again, if there could be backlash against the voters. I mean, look how people get ridiculed when they leave off surefire Hall of Famers in sports. Like the assholes who didn't vote for Randy Johnson the first year. Because you can't have a unanimous it. Hall of Famer. Yeah, this Fuck could, you. This could, um, <laughs> this could stem from some spite, Dave. So I would watch out. If yep. I were you. Because mm. then if you vote down somebody's candidate and the other three people are for it, they might take one of your nominations and be like, yeah, yeah, two. And then what? Mm. Zero. Am I that petty? Yes. Yes, yes I am. Are we yes. all that petty? At least at times? Yes. All right. Okay, so first one is George Washington. First Tens one. all around, right? George Washington. I don't know. I mean, the <laughs> fake teeth, the, the keeping of slaves, I, I think it's got some shine off the apple now. Okay, look, I was joking. Don't go. Don't do it. Michelle, oh. you're muted. Man. I know. I was going to say, the <laughs> meme, though, and the song, George Washington, is baller. Right. So, like, I don't know. Mm, that's true. That does help his case. He saved children, yeah. but not the British children. It's true, <laughs> which this is all good stuff. How about our first actual nominee? I was going to say, yeah, let's do it. All right. So, we present to you, maybe this, this might be surprising to some people. You might think we would go for something like more of a... A, a huge star or like a like a, a slam dunk for the first one but instead i think there's a very interesting and still applicable candidate in actor brian cranston he's the first one the first one as soon as you said it i cringed a little the first out of all our hall of fame why here's brian our first cranston? member i oh. i like him as a choice because i grew up watching malcolm in the middle 
and I loved that show. Like, I loved it. It was one of my favorites, which is weird because it, it was a strange little show. But, um, but it's good. It's, so it's good. good. It still holds up, weirdly mm-hmm. enough. Like, it's actually, mm-hmm. it's really charming. And actually, that was the first time I'd ever seen Brian Cranston do anything. And I loved his character. Um, it's good stuff. And then, of course, now we have the legacy uh, Breaking Bad, and he's done other amazing stuff. Like, he was in Drive and really good movies. He's a great actor. Like, genuinely so good. And he's a cool dude. Like, I haven't heard mm-hmm. of anything negative about this man. Ever. Like, so, ever. So, yeah, when I remember when someone told me about Breaking Bad, because I didn't watch it from the beginning, I remember somebody told me that Brian Cranston was in it. I'm like, wait a minute. That's the dad from Malcolm Middle. Mm-hmm. I don't believe you. There's no way that's him. Like, th- yeah. there's no way. That's just so completely different. And I was, like, watching the first season of Breaking Bad thing. like, wow, that's really weird. He's the dad from Malcolm in the Middle. He's acting so different. And now I can't see him as Hal yeah. from Malcolm in the Middle anymore. Right. It's like, no, no wow, uh, Walter White is acting so nice now. It's just weird. He's so goofy. It's kind yeah. of amazing how he's flipped the script. Because Mm -hmm. at a certain point, I think the vast majority of people would have only known him from Malcolm in the Middle, which I agree, by the way. I actually almost like it more now than I did back when it was first airing. I think it holds up exceptionally well. But you're right. Looking back on that, you're like, this guy ends up becoming Walter (laughs) White? This goofball is going to be one of the most serious like drama actors of the 2010s? That Mm -hmm. can't be right. Yeah. So so And I think... I think, Michelle, what you said, too, the reason why I kind of wanted to nominate him is not only the acting chops, which are clear. When you see somebody do so two so ridiculously different roles and nail it both ways, that's such a good way of proving how good of an actor they are. But also, like Michelle said, the no, nobody says anything bad about him. I've not heard anyone say, like, uh, man, I really can't stand that guy. He's a great actor, but I can't stand his personality. So that means either he is a great just has a great PR team or just overall just doesn't get himself in situations in which you want to hate him like he doesn't make himself totally vocal but also he's not not vocal in a way no he I mean I've heard he's funny like in real life he's like he's always cracking jokes with people that he's working with people and like actively enjoy working with him so Mm -hmm. I think he's just genuinely a good person you guys here's the thing what Brian Cranston yes he's great I mean, you watch the show and you're just like captivated when he's speaking. It's a, it's amazing. I don't know how he does it, but okay. Imagine if in space jam, Michael Jordan playing baseball in the beginning, if you recall, joins the, the basketball team, the mons, the, no, he doesn't join them. That would have been a very different movie. He joins the <laughs> tune squad and Lee, he's great. You know, leads them all like stretching best basketball player ever. In this world leads them to the championship. Now imagine if he had then gone back and done baseball the rest of his life. And you know, he's fine. He's he was a fine baseball player for his league, but like just not very good. This analogy is how I feel about Brian Cranston. He Why? He was he was good in Malcolm in the Middle. He was fine, sure. And then Breaking Bad is like, oh my god, holy shit, who is this person? And then, you know, he's kind of really done. All. He did drive for like, he was in it for like a cameo almost. Uh, he's in Power Rangers. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> he has not, he, like a lot of actors of his caliber will go from one thing to the next thing and they will keep, uh, you know, adding to their resume as it were. Not really he's- Brian Cranston. He's like, this is my legacy and I'm done. I'm, I'm retired. I've moved on. I'm pers- I respect that. He's 62. He doesn't have to prove himself at all at this point. Like, I'm not I saying think he does. Good I'm just, for you. I just think it's, it's, uh, he has such a bizarre career trajectory, and I think it's cool, yeah. but. It was a late bloomer. Yeah. Really yeah. for him. Sports Hall of Fames that are a lot more scientific about this because of statistics and whatnot will often consider like the pinnacle of someone's career. How long were they at the top of the field? How many years? How great were they even in a shorter span? I'm not saying that applies here, but to some extent it still kind of does. I because think it does. His career is kind of mm-hmm. nothing before Malcolm in the Middle. And even then, it's now been five years since Breaking Bad ended. The biggest movies on that resume besides Driver are probably Power Rangers, which you mentioned, and Godzilla, which was also not very good. <laughs> so the question then is, does his excellence in Breaking Bad and a favorable look back at Malcolm in the Middle, is that enough to carry him? And that's up for the voters to decide. Yeah, so I, Brian, that's a good he point. Was also, 
he was also on a Broadway show, of which I can't remember which show that was, and I have to go see it. I have to go see which one it is. He's coming up in a Broadway show, I think. Who ca- soon, if it's not Hamilton, I don't care. It's not Hamilton. <laughs> I know he's had a lot of, though. like, bit parts, like you were saying, too, in in good movies, but not, like, super active roles. And maybe that's just a choice on his part. He doesn't want to, he doesn't have to, he doesn't want to anymore, so he doesn't, he just doesn't. It kind of reminds me of, like, um, in fact, we should put him on our, our list, uh, Elijah Wood. He, like, did Lord of the Rings and then was just, like, nothing else ever again. He did, um, <laughs> Wilf- was it Wilfred, yeah. that show? Wilfred, Wilfred, I, Wilfred, I yeah. love it, but, like, um... A lot of people are like, what happened? What happened to Elijah Wood? It's like I, there was a lot of potential there, and he just decided he was done. Um, I respect it personally. And I think having, like, one or two really, really good things as opposed to, like, a huge body of work and, like, three quarters of them are kind of garbage and then, like, some of them are okay. Like, I'd rather have a few, like, really good highlights than that, I guess. Yeah, I agree. That's uh, very similar in, to foot, in football to Kurt Warner, how he was like, boom, and then done. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, uh, as a quick aside, uh, later we should have a conversation about where are they now with Lord of the Rings actors? Uh, <laughs> I would love to see will that. Shock you. you have Sir Ian McKellen. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> that's... Anyways. Uh, yeah. So, that's so Martin weird. Martin Freeman's well, done some yeah. things. <laughs> Viggo Mortensen, what happened with him? Anyway... Yeah. yeah. Well, Freeman doesn't count. He's the new trilogy. That's different. Okay. But yeah. Whoa. So. I'm like, now it's like all I can think about. Anyway, we're going to go back <laughs> well, to... Orlando Bloom, Michelle's sure, your Pirates of the Caribbean, which was also huge. But, yeah, outside but now, that, where is he? Now, now, nothing. The one thing I will say in Cranston's favor, or at least not against him as much, people will have to decide on their own how much his body of work since then matters. At least it's not like he has a bunch of awful movies. No. It's not like he tried no. to keep going and he just couldn't duplicate the success of Breaking Bad. It was more like, oh, you know what? I, I've done my thing. I'm getting older. I'll just take these little roles I want in the hell with it. So it's not like it's too bad. But the question mm-hmm. is, did it leave you wanting more and you were disappointed by not getting more? And that's up to individuals. Okay, so Dave and Michelle, you are clearly the biggest supporters of the Crans, the Cranston. <laughs> what are your votes? Bry Cran. Yeah. Oh, it's only I'm one vote. Cran- Keep that in mind. Now, there's no before after. Yep. There's no time I'm capsule. I'm in Town. Um. Anyway, it, just so everyone knows, I, I did look it up real quick. It's you remember the movie Network from years ago? No. no. Remember that movie? Vaguely, I don't think cool. I've seen it, but okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's it's a Broadway show now that's called Network, and so he's leading. He's doing the leading role in network. it. Network. He anyway, plays what's his face? Not Social Network. No, he's not playing Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Um. Or, or the Winklevoss twins. Um. <laughs> anyway. That'd be cool. Man, if you could play twins on Broadway, that's he the could. greatest role ever. I would believe it. He'd have another, like, one of those paper mache heads. It'd be cool. I could watch that. What do you think, brother? <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Huh. Um, so anyway, uh, for the mere fact, a lot, of, a lot of things I like is the stuff we've talked about, just how he's kind of had a very high peak um, hasn't done a lot of bad things and also has does has nothing negative to say about it. I will go with rating him at an 8.5. Um, I am right in that same area as you, Dave. I agree. I think what he has contributed far outweighs all the stuff that maybe aren't isn't as good because I think Breaking Bad is probably one of the best TV shows of all time. Um, and you, you I mean, He's incredible. Uh, with that in mind, I give him, I also give him an 8.5. I was trying to determine between like an 8 and a 9, and there you are in the middle. God, you're both suckers. <laughs> I know, I love him. Here's the thing. Brian Cranston, uh, sure, didn't have a lot before, doesn't have a huge body of work, uh, you know, died afterwards pretty much. We're talking about one of the best all-time shows, and he will go down as one of the best all-time TV actors ever. Yeah. Ever. And you're going to give him an 8.5? Are yeah. you joking? I will give him a 9.5. I, Dane, I almost want to give him a 10. But because Damn. of those reasons that we're talking about, I'm, gonna has, I'm going to, to, to restrain myself. Uh, he's one of the all-time greats. If we're going to give him an 8.5, we might as well shut down Hall of Fame. What, who can top that? I mean, there's long. I mean, you want to you want to so you can top that. You want someone who consistently pounds out hits, is liked by everybody. Tom Hanks would be the ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Tom Hanks. <laughs> Give me another one. 
Because he's the that's he the, the one, one that came off the top of my head. Consistently, Morgan, uh, every movie. Morgan Daniel Freeman, Day Lewis. Denzel no, Morgan Washington, Freeman would Dan- not be that either. For your Daniel Day Lewis would. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, he would be sometimes. <laughs> Tom sometimes. Cruise, kind of. He's been in a lot of. Yeah, movies. but he's got the whole. Uh... Yeah, he's got the whole. <laughs> Yeah, but Daniel, we only know. I mean, we know Daniel Day Lewis for like his hits, and he's. I think he's won the most Academy Awards. Like, yeah, obviously great, but according to you two, he's also been in some not good stuff. So it's like, yeah, you know. No, no, we're talking about all, Tom Cruise, all time best actor. No, we're talking about Daniel Day Lewis. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> but he's been in a couple bad movies. So eight. It's like no, yeah, no, eight point five. That's good. That's really good. So uh, Chris, that's Hall of Fame worthy. We're I literally saying he should be in the Hall of Fame. I can't change their votes, Chris, but I am going nine point five. Let's see what score do I have to give him to keep him out. I'm just kidding. Five I wouldn't half. do that. I already had a score picked out. I'll stick with it. It's only a seven. Remember, I haven't seen Breaking Bad. I'll still give him some points for acknowledging that everybody else seems to critically acclaim it, no matter what happens. And he gets like a bonus half a point for being in a music video with Stephen Colbert once, there where he's go. he's in like a '70s roller skating club and. Looks like he's having the time of his life. Um, <laughs> were they listening to that song? I've had the time of my life. No, they were playing Daft Punk oh. because Daft Punk shunned the show last minute, and he mm. had a whole half hour to fill. So he just got like a <laughs> filmed a video of him fucking around to the song with some of his friends. And so, I love him. Yeah, um, I can't go any higher than seven just because I haven't seen his main thing, and the only other thing that he's really known for is Malcolm in the Middle, which he was fine in. But as we've mentioned, it was not like. Oh my God, that dude's a secret star. You can see yeah. some of it when you look back now, but there was nobody at the time who was like, Brian Cranston needs to get a dramatic role. <clears throat> That's what he's been missing yeah. in his career. I see it. <laughs> but a seven still means that he averages out to an eight, or well, just under an eight and a half, which means he's in. Yay! Thank God, I went with so, a 9.5, you lunatics. You're fine. Hey, Sean, I thought of something. This, uh, the plot of Space Jam 2, you mentioned Michael Jordan joining the Monstars. You just put Kevin Durant in that role. Yeah, and then LeBron and has then, to boom, vanquish And then he joins him. the Monstars. <laughs> I like this aside. I like where this is going. By the way, you could have voted a 9, you still would have made it in. No, I, I mean, yeah. but what if I done a 8.5? Still would have done it's it. Iffy. Still would have done it. 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, and 7? Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah, that's... It's 32 and a half. It's more than, it's more yeah. than 8. Eight point one two five. You I'm make glad it I in. Make it close. I Look at that quick math. Five. But another eight. Then he doesn't make it, or does he on the cusp? He does run right out of time. He does. So eight. you were fine no matter what you voted, really. Four. Yeah. <laughs> if you had voted a four, <laughs> no, I voted a zero. <laughs> so Brian Cranston, okay, welcome great. to the Hall of Fame. There will be a welcoming ceremony. We'll play a montage of your clips from all two of your shows. One of the all-time greatest actors of television, barely squeaks in. To our he did it even! Oh my god! Look, Congrats, Sean, Brian. You, our committee. If, you know, you could have done better. But if it's a it's a pass fail situation here, if you get a hundred percent or eight, eighty percent, you're in. It doesn't matter. Nobody asks you later. Man, how, you got in the Hall of Fame. Did you get in unanimously, a hundred percent all the way? No, nobody oh, cares. Ask. If I know anything about sports, it'll be a thing. It's not sports. It's not know, sports. I'm just saying. And but baseball's be. the only one to care. Baseball's the only one who cares about that for some ungodly, stupid reason. Brian That's the Cranston truth. Yeah. All right, next he one. Made yeah, well, Hall of Fame's often about body of work. That's the biggest issue with Cranston, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, that's true. Whether it's fair or not, he's a late bloomer, and so some people had hesitance. Uh, next up, we'll switch from actors to something different entirely. Another person who has an uphill battle based on my own pop culture consumption, J.K. Rowling. Oh, hey, uh, I know her. Yeah, maybe that name's uh, a little bit here. She not a good start. She writes Harry Potter. She's the one who's changed half of her books after she wrote them. No, but, just the one see, main thing. This is why I recommended that we talk about her because, I mean, we have Harry Potter, which was, like, life-changing to so many people and just, like, everything to like, a lot of my friends. I was actually not a- allowed to read Harry Potter well, when I was a kid. Because, <laughs> well, yeah, that? so... That yeah, it was witchcraft, and um, so I wasn't allowed to. But I have read them all since. Could you and... do anything? Like you what? Read Harry Potter, but here's the grocery list. You can read that. Yeah, that was pretty much it. I could read books that had talking animals. 
You could read like um, instruction manuals and that's about it. Yeah, no, I could read National Geographics and okay. I'm surprised with all the nudity. Right. I know. I also am. But uh, yeah, so I wasn't allowed to read them. And so I wasn't it wasn't really part of my childhood, which sucks because it was a part of literally everyone else's. I think either my grade or the grade before, uh, like literally grew up like the same ages as Harry Potter and his friends. And so like it was a big deal. And I I think J.K. Rowling is a fine writer she's a great storyteller a decent writer yeah um and i don't know what she's doing right now but it's annoying and it needs to stop <laughs> so i so I yeah the rewrite she yeah. so it's not okay i'm gonna get there yes harry potter is great and and what i liked is that the books got stronger as it went on in my opinion the first mm -hmm. two are like these are these are okay these are better They're than kids books. Yeah, they're children. They're good. And the third one, and then the fourth one, and then the fifth one, and then the sixth one. And, and then the seventh also, one. The seventh was, was actually, it was good. It was good. Seventh was the ending. That's It had to be the ending. It was good. But, so the books were good. Obviously, the movie stemming from, I mean, she's a pop culture you know, phenomenon. She has defined a generation or more of uh, you know storytelling. She's huge. Yep. Mm -hmm. The rewrite, you know, we make it sound worse than it is. To my knowledge, there's one rewrite, right? It's that Dumbledore was gay. Everything uh, else is like... Well, oh, Sean! Well, no, there's more than that. The, the other thing I know about is um, she she realizes she made a mistake with, uh, with Ron and Hermione. Mm -hmm. Right. To me, that's not a rewrite. That That's not saying, you know what, guys? So Here's what actually what happens. They get divorced, and then Harry and her... Uh, or whatever the case may be. It was just like, you know what? I admit I made a mistake. You can so, do that after you, you write can. a book. You can. You totally have every right to do so. But she's doing this constantly. And she's treating it as if these things she's posting on Twitter are just to be accepted as canon. And it's bullshit. Like you what? Can't just, something else. Like, <laughs> oh my God. She was talking. About, I don't know why. She was talking about like. Hufflepuffs like masturbating and stuff. Like, I can't. I have no idea. Yeah, like on Twitter, it's just like yeah, like Hufflepuffs like meet in like this little group and they like jerk off. But like, I, what are the fuck are you even talking about? Like, and this is she does this constantly. And she talked about like, um, oh, she said that Snape. No, not Snape. Oh my God, um, not Snape. Uh, what's his, is serious? Uh, black. Black. Serious Black was one hundred percent not queer which pissed off a lot of people who were like it's like don't what are you what are you doing well, wait, stop answering questions what wait, why no, does that what? piss off anyone that snape that sirius wasn't gay i know why uh, that a people. lot of people thought but, he was or they wanted him to be and two so? you're not allowed you, here's what you're not allowed to be any more mad than the opposite like you, it's all it's all weird it's all weird she, that he's like this again she can say whatever she wants yeah. but mm -hmm. she treats everything she says as if we're supposed to accept what she says because she's the writer none of it is actually in the books therefore it doesn't matter so honestly she shouldn't keep talking about them it's not I her agree. job anymore the books are in the world and we're going to interpret it how we want i can interpret serious black as gay if i want to and she has no right to tell me otherwise i don't think she needs to keep retreading the exact same stuff over and over again but adding these little details clearly if it wasn't meant to be that important in the books so she didn't put it in there maybe you shouldn't say anything about it just I let us i don't have that much on. of a problem with i don't know uh it's 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 relatively minor things that she's doing um at least in my uh, opinion that, that Okay, let me rephrase. She's not saying, hey, you know, book seven, it was all a dream. Actually, didn't <laughs> happen at all. They all died no. at the end of book six. It's character orientation, sure. I, I'm not, I don't mean it's trivial, but I'm saying in the grand scope of things, it's a smaller scope thing than, than what it could be. Let her talk. I mean, she made these books. She, obviously, fans are still engaging with her. I don't know if she's screaming, like, please still pay attention to me. Like, she has a, a platform. Let her do uh, it. What does it matter? Well, and then there's, like, the cursed child, and it's, like, it's so bad. And I just... I... Now, did she write that, or did she, like, consult? 
that. She consulted with it, but here's, I mean, that's the part of the problem is that she keeps like adding to this, like this entire franchise in ways that I think are subpar. And it's like, I just don't understand the point, like what she's doing. Like if she wants to really get into it, write another fucking book. People would eat that shit up, but no, instead she just like, takes to Twitter and she like consults on like, you know, kind of boring like plays. And it's like, the, I don't know what she's trying to do. It's yeah. confusing to me. I don't know. And to I, me- I feel you. I, Cause I agree. And we kind of have her up on a pedestal. Well, like society has her up on a pedestal. And so it's easy to be like, you want to do it? Just write another book. And then I'm thinking of myself and I'm like, I haven't put like one word to page yet. I would love to write it. It's hard. It's hard to get in there. And I also wouldn't blame her if she's like, you know what? I did it. I did it for seven books. I almost broke my hand one time because of the pressure I felt from all of this. I want to be done. I'm going to do my Twitter thing. I think that's okay. I don't think it tarnishes the I do the legacy, you know? I I do. I mean, ultimately, I think you're right, John. I think you're right. I think, like, in, like, 20 years, no one's going to give a shit about what she said on Twitter. I don't think anyone's even going to remember that, like, she said that Dumbledore is gay. Now it's in the movies, and so I don't really know what to do about any of that. That is an interesting thing. It's so weird. Um, That would be the only one that is truly, like, apparently canon now. Um, Clarify something for me real quick. It is Voldemort in the movies, correct? With a T? Yeah. Yes. Because yes. she also came out recently, I think a few yep. months ago, and said the T is silent. The T is silent. I know. I know. And I'm like, what? Okay, I guess. But you also had a chance to intervene when there was going to be, you know, spoken aloud for seven, eight movies. So where were you then? <laughs> it's just another example of the like, what are you doing this now for? I just. Yeah. Uh, it's here's the whole. Here's the whole reason I, I would say. I mean, my score was not going to reflect on the Hall of Fame. Spoiler alert. Um, She's one that it seems she wrote something that a lot of people loved and now just seems to maybe have the in not, not, not the desire or ability to create something new. And so she's kind of resting on her laurels, which is keeping her in the spotlight by changing all these things or bring all these answer these people's questions or changing things. And it's something that if I guess if she wants to do it, fine, no one's going to stop her. But we can also stop paying attention to her. So but anyway, I'd say. I would not. I would not want to put her in Hall of Fame because of the idea that she's kind of created her thing, and unlike Brian Cranston, she's kind of trying to force herself back in the spotlight by consistently doing this stuff. I agree. I she also. Yeah. Does- I. You know, we are being really unfair. I think to. We get so mad uh, as a society when somebody creates something and then they don't want to engage. Oh, overall, maybe some of us are okay with that. No, they can do their own thing, mm-hmm. and that's fine. But like we get really upset when people that we love don't want anything to do with us. And we try to engage them and they're like, no, we don't want to talk to you. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, no, wonderful that's interesting, that you Sean. too don't, but generally. No, that's, it's really interesting to me because um, I think you're right overall. I think people want to have that engagement. I think of um, one of my favorite bands is MGMT. But like when I go to forums and people are like, what's the worst live show you've ever seen? Far and away, I'll see like, more and more often, MGMT is the worst live band. And I'm like, why? I've seen them like four times. They're great. And then I actually look at why, and they're like, oh, they don't engage with the audience. Right. And people are expecting that from a pop outfit, and so they want to have the whole Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift experience, and they're not going to get that because that's actually not what they're about. Anyway, all that to say, yeah. I think people truly do want engagement from people that they admire. And that's what they have I- expectations. Overall, they want that. Uh, you know, if Dave doesn't want to, who the fuck are you going to engage with anyways, Dave? What do you want? You know, <laughs> fan letters to Brian Cranston. You watch like three TV shows. Who are you engaging with? Anyways, Chris, you were trying to make a point. Just that that level of engagement is the only reason why Twitter exists. Right. That's what I'm saying. And if the, even if the four of us didn't like it, none of us are really that big on Twitter. We are not the speaking for the majority here. Twitter would have already folded a long time ago if it was only people posting about their own dumbass lives. But because there's also the chance that you can tweet some celebrity with two million followers and they'll send you a reply, that's the lure of it. People want it, even though maybe they shouldn't. 
I just, I feel like some, as a writer, like it bothers me and not so much as a consumer of her work. Cause again, I didn't have a whole lot of investment in the story to begin with, but like as a writer, I feel like she is tarnishing the reputation of her own body of work. And I don't know why you would continue doing that. You don't, you're not forced to engage. She could talk about and does talk about other things that are not relevant to the Harry Potter series. And that's fine. But like, I just, I question her, like, I don't know, like, not her taste, but, like, I I question, like, uh, the validity of anything that she says. And then, as a result, it makes me look back less fondly on the original source. See, I'm good about the compartmentalizing, but, like, I do it to a weird amount, like, uh, sometimes sequels will come out or chapters, and I'll be like, this sucked not canon and mm-hmm. in my head i can <laughs> doesn't do that. exist mm-hmm. yeah and really mm-hmm. and and i will uh, depending on what it is rocky i mean rocky five is basically not canon and truly i don't even think he thinks it's canon anymore and that was an installment so like i can do things like that so this this stuff i don't think it's super harmful to begin with even if it was if she was like you yeah. know actually dumbledore was a child rapist it's like you can that's weird for you to say, but like, it doesn't change <laughs> my experience with those books. It I had rape Harry I in had, the book. So, <laughs> and they were very good. It will it probably stop me from reading them again, maybe, but <laughs> so I guess it's time to vote now. A highly contentious round of hall of fame. I know. Oh, why don't you uh, guys go first again? God, it's, this is actually really hard because I do want to just look at the, canonical body of work and i know that it's like so important to so many people but my own like personal it's a getting in the way of of, i know um all that said um i'm gonna i don't want to put her in the hall of fame i'm gonna give her a seven (laughs) this is michelle's own candidate by the way yes yeah um well that's what i thought it might be a really good thing to talk about because yeah. (laughs) yeah So here I say that you have to judge more than just her main body of work because we're not judging Harry Potter. We're judging the writer. So um, I, I say that the book series, uh, like Sean said, books one and two, not that great. Three through seven were really good. And I thought they were really good pieces of work. And I, they're one of the few books that I sat down, like read as quick as I could. I don't read a ton just cause I don't know. I'm just not, I don't know. I consume media in other ways. But yeah, like not um, doing it at all. Funny, yeah. Keep keep that joke going. That's hilarious. Uh, anyway, so I think that judging her as an author with the consistency of trying to interject herself and everything, Harry Potter is a great series. I didn't like the movies that much. I liked the books way more. Uh, so overall, I'd, I'd say great job creating this awesome thing that changed a lot of people's lives. But I will give her a six. We didn't even talk about her other books. That's because they're not worth Do talking about. Do they have about. any? Because they're <laughs> okay, shit. They're okay. The problem is they're not. There's no Harry. In, they're, Harry Potter's not. I mean, she she invented some amazing characters. And when the they're casual not, vacancy, John, is unreadable. What? What? what, what? The, casual the casual vacancy. vacancy I have not came out in 2012. It is unreadable. It's so bad. Like I, I'm telling you, truly. the only other books I know she did was like the the. Um, other books in the Harry Potter like world, yeah, like uh, Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, yeah, I guess that is a book too. And then she did another one. It was like it was like short stories, and, and that was that was pretty good. It was worth reading. It was fine. fine. Yeah. yeah, no, she has like a whole separate like side career doing like shitty mysteries now, and they're bad. Like <laughs> truly, truly she not good. Check now. She's like, you know what? I'm the best selling author of all time. So. Sell out. I don't have to uh, work hard anymore. The problem we're kind of, stand. So the problem we're running into here is this is difficult because it's books instead of movies and there's a lot more personal involvement and how much a, one person encompasses the, this entire project. Outside of Harry Potter, her career is pretty much non-existent. Now, that's still a glaring omission. You can't just say outside of Harry Potter when it's one of the yeah. biggest phenomenons in book history. But that also ended in 2007. It has been 11 years since then. Maybe she has the right to not do anything since then. But she hasn't not done anything. She has done her own writing outside of Harry Potter, and most of it has been poorly received. 
So it's kind of the opposite of the thing we mentioned with Brian Cranston. He's done some things, but mostly on the side and not really like dedicated his full interest in it. She's kind of put herself out there in other projects, and it has not been a good look. Yeah. I'm just, I just want to warn, we're setting. And now, she should not, like, no one, no one we do should get an automatic pass. But we're setting a very dangerous precedent by not having the all-time greatest selling author not in the Hall of Fame. I'm just throwing it out there. I just want We can put Harry in. Potter in there. We it's can put Ron in yeah. there. That's what so I'm saying. In there. I, I'm, I, I am aware. I'm just saying. Uh, you know, when was the first Harry Potter? When did it come out? 90... 1997. 99. Oh, 97. Wow. 97. So, I mean, over the course of 10 years, unlike she did one masterpiece, uh, she had a Moby Dick. And it was huge. And then when she died, nobody knew her name and it wasn't famous until much later. No, this was each book sold a ton of copies. She sustained success over the whole series. I also think that's important to look at. It was not one novel. It was seven and consulting on the movies and all of that, uh, all of the other stuff. And she put them out in a timely fashion, even with the additional pressure that each book and its subsequent like giant popularity created, which is unlike, I don't know, George R.R. R. Martin. Y'all. Just I, to think of one example. I respect the hell out of him. But you compare her and him, and you're like, it really makes you impressed with what she's done. And because he's mm-hmm. moving at a glacial pace. Yes, his books yeah. are bigger than hers, but that's not nearly enough to justify the amount of time in between. I don't think so. His, his writing is a lot more um, um, thematically dense as well, like yeah. every sentence you can read in it. But still. But still. Still. Uh, so, Chris, why don't you give your By the way, Hero George R. R. Martin the other day was like, you know, I could have given him like another six or seven seasons worth of TV. I know. And everybody was like, they weren't going to wait for it, you <laughs> fucking idiots. <laughs> exactly. I like you, man. I'm not even one of those guys that's a detractor of George R. R. Martin, but I'm like, if you can't see why they've moved on without you on this, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. And they had moved on like uh, actually a bit ago, a few years ago. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. this isn't like a new development. It's no. Up. I saw the writing on the wall there. Yeah. I guess it came up only because they're heading into the last season. So it was basically like, hey, you know, this is ending. What do you think? Well, it could have kept going if, but even so, it's like, George, just, just stop. Just stop. Come on, just buddy. Just stop. Um, I'm only going to give J.K. Rowling a six. Remember, I have not read Harry Potter. So if you wanted her to make it in, then you probably should have picked a different author. I know. But... I'm giving it a six only because I think its importance to young people reading was sky high. And that's the thing I care about the most out of all this. Not that adults couldn't enjoy it too, but the idea that this, like a few other series like Goosebumps and other like big benchmark book series over the years, got kids to read in a time when, especially as we get into the 2000s, more and more kids were not, and they were being steeped in technology as it developed. So what she did was remarkable, self-contained, and has to be judged by the vast majority of what she did I don't really care about the stuff that's come after because I don't care about the books. So her changing things in the books doesn't matter to me. But even so, I don't have anything to latch on to either. Man, she should... I think she should be seven default. Like, if you've never read it, okay. That, I mean, that I understand it. Seven default, which makes Dave score inexcusable because he has read them. I can't even under... I can't even understand. What do I do? What do I do now? She can't make it in. It's impossible. Give her a 10 and she can't make it in, I so have fun. I wouldn't even do that to begin with. I'm not, uh, you know, I have some integrity. Sean is not a man who gives out 10s easily, and neither am I. No, I'm not, and I wasn't going to do it here either. Uh, not like it would matter, but I just, I can't, we're going to look back. History is going to be the judge. We're going to look back on this day, yeah. and we're going to be like, they're going to be like, so, uh, no J.K. Rowling in the Hall of Fame. We got... Brian Cranston, he made an empty chair next to him. He was ready, but n- no, we, we voted no on J.K. You know, Rowling. if we would have okay. done this in 2012, I think we would have had a way different thought yeah. process on this, but time matters. You know, I don't think in this case it shouldn't that much. I don't think what she's no, done in 2012 till now has been like, oh, she would have been a nine. Harry now Potter. she's a six. Three points is not- a huge. That's. We're not judging I, Harry Potter. Just, We're judging her. But, yeah, it would have been probably a point or a point and a half at most for me. Well, that would have brought you to an eight. That would have brought... That's the difference between being in the Hall of Fame or not. Five years yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah, and we're saying that this changed everything. The way that she went about uh, changing her books, creating more stories that weren't good. Like, yeah, it's going to degrade her score. Sorry. 
You want to go back to the sports analogy? Roger Clemens would have been in the Hall of Fame as of 2000, but he kept playing. Now he's not in the Hall of Fame. Barry Bonds, same thing. And alternatively, sometimes the time will help someone. For example, Mm -hmm. what would Robert Downey Jr.'s score have been in, oh, I don't know, 2004? (laughs) Oh, I would love... We should put him in there at some point. That would be a good one. A three? (laughs) I literally watched Natural Born Killers last night, and he's in it with like the worst Australian accent known to man, and it makes me it made me laugh so hard. It was so I mean, bad. He has a couple anyway. good movies, like prior to his whole drug overdose part of his career. There's yeah. a couple decent hits in there. There's also some real misses, and now, of course, people's impressions would be very different. Yep, man, you guys, I just I can't. All right. Sorry. I, I'm gonna give her a nine because I'm a I'm a normal human being who can respect her. If I'm J.K. Rowling and I'm calling the show and I'm being like, so um, what would I've had to do aside from creating uh, one of the all-time greatest series of all time to to get into your Hall of Fame? What what more could I have done? Been a normal human being after. Let your story speak for itself. And she'll be like, oh, that's rich coming from you, David. But uh, you know what? That's that's fine. She's not gonna make it. I'm not going in the Hall of Fame. She didn't no, even me get either. close. I mean, that's not, that's not even close. What happens when J.K. doesn't make it in, but Catherine, uh, was it Hardwick, 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 the author of the Twilight series? Stephanie Meyer? Stephanie oh, Meyer. somebody else. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Stephanie Meyer. What happens when Stephanie Meyer makes it in? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Stephanie Meyer has stayed oh, no. in her fucking lane. Yeah. I will give her credit where credit is due. She, she wrote this piece she of shit. She wrote shit and then didn't go back and try to make it better. Yeah. Honestly, because no one respect. cares anymore. I respect Stephanie Meyer so much. Man, I'm really, just going to say like, that right oh, now. Nobody does uh, care anymore. You have, to, you have to say that. For At least people still care about Harry Potter. I think yeah. her reputation dove after the movies, in my personal yeah. opinion. Like, it the helped. books, it was pretty high. Obviously, they made the movies. And then the movies, just got just, just precipitous decline. Bad. Yeah, and it was never that high to begin with. She probably wishes she could engage fans, but she has a Twitter. There's no one. Fun. That's probably not true. She probably has like no, 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 no. no. Twitter, She's but. made so much money. She yeah. is. She yeah. wants for nothing. She's doing fine. We just yeah. should not feel sorry for She's her. Doing all right. So that puts J.K. Rowling squarely in the uh, Rowling squarely in the Hall of Tame. Yeah, the Hall mm. of Tame. You know, all Which, she did was write the fucking Harry Potter. But you know, <laughs> and there enough. she goes. She's driving away. <laughs> In a hurry, because she's very upset. Here's the biggest <laughs> issue we made. I'm surprised by Michelle, but, like, I get it. We have Dave judging a bunch of pop culture shit. This is... Uh, I should have seen this. I should have... I've read thought them. Ahead. Um, Chris, yeah, I it have. It doesn't matter. That's like, a, it's like a robot saying, well, I analyzed all the words on that page. Doesn't mean they're going to have an emotional response to it, Dave. I had to read when Sirius died. I had to read that page five times and almost cried. Uh, and well, almost cried. Let, let, be, be sure to let JK know that when you explain why she's not in the Hall of Fame. But I, I did almost I cry on my page. I, I'm, I'm done with so, you. So just take the time to point out that you're still not gay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. That's... Honestly, I think that's my biggest annoyance, to be completely I, honest with you. I think it was clearer when you said, what right does she have? And I'm sitting here thinking, I mean, she did create the <laughs> character, so she has at least some right, and if you can't acknowledge no, that, I don't know what to tell you. because she already published the goddamn book. But not if every detail about every character is not going to make it into diversity, a book. diversity, then it wasn't important to her at the time. Why would it be important to her now? It's fake. It's totally not genuine. Matters, Fuck you, J.K. Rowling. Matter. Fuck you. Michelle, it only matters... <laughs> When you make it matter, like if I if I if I did a thing where it's like, oh, it's weird that everybody read my book with this metaphor. I actually, had the opposite metaphor in mind. I can say that, and that was my intention. It's not going to change anybody from the way that they read it. They're mutually, I don't think, they exist together. I don't think it was her intention. So if she had confirmed that he was in fact gay and got along with that, would her opinion have had any more sway? Because it shouldn't. That and that's what I'm saying is like. The opposite group of people, unfortunately, were like, oh, I can't believe in Trump's America that Dumbledore is gay. That is unacceptable. And then they hear that uh, Sirius is straight and they're like, yeah. And then they shotgun a beer. That's what I'm saying is happening here. But they the opposite. They shotgun a beer. Like we. <laughs> and I smashed the can on their forehead. Yeah. 
I'm saying it's not relevant to the story in any way. So I don't feel like I don't feel like her inclusion adding these things are genuine. I feel like she wanted to tick some boxes and appeal to certain people. So she said the thing and that's not acceptable to me. But she, I she didn't like, actually allow me to ask you, Michelle, um, look me in the eyes. <laughs> you are much more outraged that Sirius is straight. No, I'm not. You're equally outraged that Dumbledore no. is gay and Sirius is straight. No, I'm more outraged about the the fact that she felt the need to tell everyone after the books were published that Dumbledore was gay. That feels when, like you're skirting my it, question. <laughs> no, no. The books had every reason to include the fact that he was gay. It makes perfect sense with Grindelwald. It makes perfect sense. Why didn't she just do it? She was so famous by that point. Book six, I think is, or, yeah, book six is when you actually talk about Grindelwald and Dumbledore. Why didn't she do it? Yeah, because it wasn't her fucking intention. And then she was like, oops, I made a mistake. Oh no, I'm not including other people. Oh no, I messed up. And then she's trying to like fix her mistakes. And in doing so, it's just like, this is totally not genuine at all. It comes across so fake. I've put myself in the unenviable position of now having to defend an author I don't really care about. But the one thing I will say is things are different in 2018 than they were in 2003. There's been a lot of gay characters before then well, and, and well, after. Well, I was going to bring in up... In children's books. I didn't know if we wanted to she belabor it. it, but I will belabor. I will belabor this shit out of this. Um, She's untouchable. She could have done anything. She could have made him transgender. That and was no one would have my question cared. is how much pressure was there from... None. Well, she could okay, do anything. Do you know I'm just curious. I'm curious. Do you actually she, know that? Or like, that's what we no, think. But, but she could do anything and they knew it would have sold. I guarantee you she didn't approach the publishers and be like, look, I really want this character to be gay. And they were like, no, you can't have it. There's no way. I think we would have heard that. Like, yes. she, uh, if not then, at least now. But she would have been like, I really tried, guys. But the publishers were like, nah. If that had been the case, this wouldn't even be a discussion. <laughs> That's Look, my problem. You're with mad her. at JK for the whole after thing. I'm mad at Dave for a six. <laughs> so let's just put it all to bed. And I, 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 I thought this would be a judgment free zone. You should have known better. Apparently not. Okay, first I, of all, the whole concept is judging yeah. other people. That's what judgment of our scores. That's the foundation this is built upon. Secondly, why would you ever think internally even that there's no judging? <laughs> Dave often you you get judged by Sean for things that are in segments that don't even involve a scoring system, yeah. just based on your responses. I, I, I want to say I by no means led anyone to believe that there would be no judging. <laughs> and I'm not saying that's fair or right. I'm just saying you should be used to it because it's been yeah. happening for 360 episodes. I would say the opposite. In fact, uh, my political campaign is built upon judging others and specifically Dave. <laughs> You're running that back, huh? Oh yeah. Oh the, no. Just you know the metaphorical political campaign of of my existence, my my persona. I don't miss that. My IP. I don't well, I mean, either. I, I, I'm not gonna do it again. I lost. That's good. Twice. I gave the American people what I thought they wanted, and the, you know they said no. Nobody and likes you were Ross. Dead Burrow. wrong. <laughs> yeah. They, when you lose, you just gotta fade off. Yeah. You can't. Looking at you, Hillary Clinton. Just yeah. fade away for a while. Just don't. <laughs> just don't do that. <laughs> Anyways, so, final candidate. Well, so I have a quick question. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it. That's okay. I was just wondering. I wanted to ask you uh, behind the scenes. Behind the if, scenes? If we, we said three, but two has taken us a long time. So I just want to know. Are we still going to go three? Or are we well, gonna... only one of the two has taken a long time. And I don't anticipate that being the case with this last one unless there's something yeah. about this I don't know about. <laughs> well, just you wait. <laughs> he touched me when I was a little boy. Um. Our final candidate, one that will probably stick to the more shorter format, I would anticipate, is a former Daily Show correspondent, a former late-night TV show host, and a current late-night TV show host, Stephen Colbert. I love him. I love him a lot. I don't have a whole lot of negative things to say about Stephen Colbert. I love that he's a dork. Uh, he hosted, he or, um, he was a great correspondent on The Daily Show. I, I, he was one of my favorites. Um, I don't actually watch his show now, but like when he was doing the Colbert Report, I loved that show. Um, he was great on SNL doing a character on an ambiguously gay duo. Um, I, <laughs> a highlight role, definitely. Um, I just, I think he's great. Um, he, 
his the Colbert Report specifically, I think, was super instrumental in getting me into politics, too, because it was really like bite sized pieces of political stuff that I could actually digest. And I think that has carried through with, you know, uh, Trevor Noah and stuff like that. Um, I love him. I don't really is. Is there anything bad to say about Stephen Colbert? No, uh, I, I think, think you I think there's varying degrees like so I. He doesn't resonate with me. Uh, let me say, I think he's 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 cool. He's great. A lot of people like him a lot, and like I will say, he's funny. Like he's successful and all of that. Uh, it's he spoke to me on the Colbert Report. I found that hilarious. Yeah. Now it's like another night yeah. talk show, and I prefer Kimmel. I prefer I far prefer Conan O'Brien. That's just like a personal preference. Yeah. I still think he's good though. So like that's, I mean, it's varying yeah. levels of good. I don't really have anything bad to say. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, I just, I just said, I don't watch his late night show. Yeah. Um, so I guess, I, mean, I don't know if it's because I also don't really relate to it. I kind of like the persona he had yeah, on the Colbert too. report because it was like, it kind of was edgy. And it pushed boundaries. And I feel like, and I don't know if it's actually true. I've only seen like tidbits of the the new show that he's doing, but like, it feels much more moderate. Like his personality feels like, no, is that not right? Oh God. He's so angry, far left preaching stuff on his, on his late night talk show. Oh, now okay. you mean, did you he's mean not moderate at all. Moderate or did you yeah. mean like personality? I meant personality. I oh, no okay, way sorry, he's sorry. ever sorry. been politically moderate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. That's why meant. I was confused. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Ever since I, he went on, like, he was really anti-right, but then now on the talk show, he is a Republican. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah. <laughs> he was playing a Republican and wasn't, but now he's not, but he is. Turns out it wasn't satire at all. It was his actual viewpoint all those years. Wow. I think, well, I think uh, and if I'm comparing like late night, like talk show hosts, I, I prefer John Oliver nowadays. I was going to say that too. Yeah. I kind of feel like he has more relevance and I really think he's taken up the mantle even more so as the Colbert Report ended. Like he really has to me like become the more relevant role. You know, I it's know. hard though. And this will be the last thing that I say. It's hard because John Oliver, his whole setup is uh, he is able to d do a deep dive into all these issues. Yeah. Colbert, you know, maybe he can touch on it. And then he's like, now to interview the star of this shitty movie. Yeah. So it's, it's harder. And I recognize that. Yeah. We have five yeah. shows to do this week. So I guess we can't really afford to go into this in-depth topic. I right. know. Uh, that's true. It's a completely different. It's, why, it's so hard to compare Oliver to anybody really. Cause what he's doing is just so totally different than what everybody else is. And even though they're in a similar spot, like there's just no comparison really. That's true. I guess it's not really fair to compare it. Um, hmm. but, but I do prefer him though. Just the, something about the humor and the way that it works. I really like watching John Oliver. I have not loved watching Colbert, but just in like the him. new show. Yeah, yeah, I, I used to really like the report. The rapport, yeah. right? The mm -hmm. report. The, the Voldemort. The Col report. <laughs> yeah. The Colbert report. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think the biggest thing that you can say about him as far as what do you want to vote for him for Hall of Fame or not is the fact of what he's done lately as far as his TV show. And it's such a weird atmosphere now with the late night talk shows. It seems like nobody actually watches them anymore. It seems like we all watch yeah. clips of them and that's it. It's the weirdest thing how this works now. That's true. I I watched late night TV every night when I was a kid. Like, well, a teenager. And I was you were allowed to? <laughs> I actually I kind of was. My parents watched it like religiously. They loved they loved Jay Leno until he was not good. And then they, they like loved um Conan O'Brien, which I still love Conan O'Brien very much, actually. Um but yeah, so I watched it literally every night. And now I just feel like that like how we watch TV doesn't really lend itself to the, the late night like I, formula anymore. I would, <laughs> again, though, I would encourage us to be aware of us compared to like the masses because I don't, I would, That's I would want to look, but I don't know that the ratings are down. Uh, and yeah. in fact, they could even be higher. I, I don't know for sure, but um, I would be interested in knowing I, because, I don't know this for sure. They're certainly down over like 10, 15 years ago, but the television experience mm -hmm. has changed so much since then. You know, it's also like comparing yeah. to like Carson 
Well, when Carson was on, there was like six networks, so obviously yeah. he pulled much bigger numbers. I do think they're up in the last couple of years. Colbert especially is up the last yeah. couple of years, and he was not doing very well in the very beginning. He was trailing Fallon by a considerable margin. He has trailing surpassed Fallon? Fallon by a wide margin well, now. Well, Fallon is huge too, though. That And that's the I thing. Know. I'm like, do any of us really like Fallon? I would say I not do. really. No. You do. Okay. I do. I, I like think him. the talk show format's the best thing for him because it lets him yes. ham it up a little bit and be his usual annoying self in a format that actually kind of plays to that style. I'm so glad he's not on SNL anymore. He was a skit killer for me on SNL. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He'd break character every time. He laughs at his own jokes constantly. Oh, you know what, so though? Pathetic. Jimmy Fallon is living his best life, and I'm so proud of no. him. I, you know, yeah. I'm not, I don't even hate him. I get, I'm not a huge yeah, fan. I'm not going to watch his show, but he's, like, he's found something that's really good for him, so I guess good. It's not going to make me tune in, but good for him. Yeah, yeah. You guys, um, I just wish Conan could reach the same level of success. He is the I best. love him. Doesn't that bother, so doesn't that bother everyone? What? Yes. Doesn't that bother everybody that he has just gotten the shaft as far as late night TV goes? Because yeah. he was creative. That's what I loved about him. Oh, my and God. His so, segments were so... Yeah, yeah. At the core yeah. of it, he is naturally the funniest person, I think, out of mm-hmm. all well, of them. I also think... He might be the smartest too, and I oh, would God. agree with that because I, he's brilliant. Yeah. Colbert is right there with him. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's not, Colbert, yeah. Yeah, those two both, I think, are extremely intelligent, and yeah. obviously Oliver. But again, we're not really. This and is and different. then there's Fallon, and then Kimmel is somewhere there. in between <laughs> there, but not not up at the level of those smart. two. You know, for someone who uh, made his living on the the guy show or whatever the hell that was <laughs> for years, yeah. Kimmel, I'm yeah. pretty impressed with, actually. I yeah. think he's yeah. pretty funny, and I think he's, he... I think there's a lot going on uh, yeah. up yeah. there, too. But. Yeah, I think he's smart. I just don't... I think these two are, like, among the smartest celebrities in any field Yeah, with mm-hmm. Colbert yeah. and O'Brien well, both. When you hear... And I don't know if you know Colbert better, Chris. Like, when you hear Conan talk and he's, like, not... Um, you know, in front of an audience, he's like he's very somber, and yeah. like and like serious, and art is super articulate yeah. and yes. deep thinking. And you're like, holy shit! I think he went to some like Harvard or something. Like, yeah, yeah. Conan went to Harvard. Yes, because yeah, he was okay. a writer on The Simpsons, and he was part of that whole yeah. group of Simpsons right. writers who went who went to Harvard. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, smart as hell. I love him. <laughs> yeah. I know. I love that. So you know. One of the many things that have come from the Trump presidency is a lot of late night talk show hosts. One of the bad things, many bad things, obviously, is all these late night talk show hosts have just they feel like so much source material to just rip on the current administration. They don't do anything else. Yeah, it's like and low hanging fruit. And they it's such low hanging fruit. Across. And Colbert has fallen into this trap, unfortunately. Oliver did for a long time, and I think he's breaking out of it finally. Seth I stopped Myers. watching John Oliver's show. Seth Meyers. I mean, so many of these late-night politicians, uh, late-night talk show hosts just fell into this trap of like, well, this is what everybody's talking about. This is the easy joke to make, so I'm just going to do it and not be creative. And it bothered me. I, and I, I mean, like, it makes sense, though, because that's, that's it the does, news. But yeah, I, Dave, I know. So- I think Dave is a closeted Republican. First of all, let me let me throw that out there. Secondly, remember when Dave thought this was going to be a judgment-free zone? <laughs> secondly, um, I don't know about this with Obama. I truly don't. But I know for a fact in the Bush years, and so maybe it is just an anti-right uh, thing. But in the Bush years, that that was the same deal. Every mm-hmm. joke, every night, there was a yeah. Bush segment, and it's mm-hmm. easy with Bush because. Let's be if you even if you like Bush, the way he talks is like right yeah, for course. yeah. Whether you think yeah. he was intelligent or not, the way he conveyed what he was saying always I, made him look absolutely. dumb. I would hope Obama was the same way because there are politicians and we should be making fun of them all the time. He if wasn't. That wasn't he was I'm untouchable. No, no, no. He was but completely you also, untouchable by them by this whole uh, by the whole group of them. I disagree with that. But Stuart I mean, went in on him on the Daily Show. Not yeah. maybe not at this frequency, but we don't have a baseline for that because he's not around for Trump and Colbert wasn't around for Obama, so we don't really yeah. know. Yeah, you can't really talk about it. I mean, yeah. the Colbert report we can't compare it to because it's not the same thing, you know. So it's tough. Yeah. What I will say is, like John Oliver, every night uh, now, and I kind of get I get where you come from a little bit, Dave, because I was saying every yeah. site. I used to like, like we would get segments about gambling and about mm-hmm. hospitals and about college football and how they should pay them and the NCAA. Now mm-hmm. it seemed for a while, I haven't watched it recently, that it is Trump. And maybe yep. it needs to be and that's fine, but like at some point, 
I got like fatigued because it frustrates me. Exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. I, and I hate him and I hate everything he stands for. So, so then to hear night in and night out, like here's all the bad stuff he's doing makes me think, great, he's getting away with it all. So why do we even give a shit? My aside, um, uh, notwithstanding, um, yeah, I, I think it, I'd like to think that it happens all the time, but it sounds like it's more towards the Republicans. Oliver's no, gotten a little is. better, by the way. Oh, that's good. He had a big segment on Kavanaugh, but he's also had a few other side ones that really didn't have anything to do with Trump or maybe mentioned him once, yeah. but you kind of can't help but do it in certain situations. Yeah. It, for, for a few episodes in the end of 2016, early 2017, that was the entire show every single week. Right. And it, I did yeah. get fatigued on it. You're but right. post-election, yeah. it's also all anybody was talking about. It was, I, and I understand. So I get it. the I fatigue, but I also <laughs> understand, like, he gets, I can see, like, like I follow his Facebook f- feed, so I can see viewers being like, oh my God, you've been off for three weeks, we can't wait to hear you talk about X and X and X, and they're all Trump adjacent. Yeah, right. and it's like, at some point, you gotta talk to your audience, like, you gotta balance yeah, that. Yeah. What and, does the audience want, right. what do you want? And obviously, Colbert has gone maybe way too far in on Trump, but look at the opposite, Fallon got crushed because he petted Donald Trump's hair when he had him on the show. And didn't address anything that was going on with him, so it was almost like plugging his ears and going la 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 la, which you can't really do either. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's a kind of a difficult balance to strike. I actually do agree with you, Dave. I, I think the um, like too much of it it just makes us as viewers complacent too, because it's like, well, here they are, and now they're kind of making light of these serious issues, and it's just constant. Mm-hmm. It just starts to become numb to it. You get You're just like absolutely. You do. Yeah, and so I, I kind of have a problem with that, too. At the same time, that's all there is. I mean, it's like Trump just does, like, one dumb thing after the next, and it's like, what else do we have? I mean, it that's what we want to hear. That's what, that's what I don't know. It, it's yeah. it's tough. It's really tough. So, so you can't really say anything I'm... bad about Colbert, right? Um, no, I mean, it, he's the a low creative, point funny be, person. Right. I guess the low point, speaking of the politics, the low point might be when he said, like, Vladimir Putin, like Trump was yeah, his we, cock. Uh, yeah, his mouth. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Which that was surprisingly risque for CBS. Yeah. Yeah. They I mean, got, CBS got pretty pissed at that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but uh, yeah, I mean, I get it. Just angry. It was just so angry, yeah. which is yeah. crazy. But And we haven't even uh, mentioned Harvey Birdman, attorney of law. <gasps> that's right. <laughs> like, oh, shit. I forgot. That, does he write that? What is, what oh, or Charlene? He's uh, you're right behind me now, Charlene. Oh. What's it? that too? He's a uh, Phil Ken Seven. Yeah. I don't watch I the show, but I've heard show. good. Things. He's the guy with the eye patch. Oh, okay. It's yeah. so good. I forgot. Oh my god. Well, my rating is just sky yeah. high now. <laughs> it's so that's 14. great. And Colbert has done right. like other um. What's that show called? Uh, uh, Rick and Morty, or is that just John Oliver? It's in he Rick was, and Morty. He was an ep- no. They were both on it. Okay. Both run. Yeah. Uh, the, their guest guest appearances. They were like just one. Yeah. Colbert yeah. doesn't do a lot of like acting, but he does a lot of voice work. It seems like he does. He does. Yeah, which That's is cool. really. He, I mean, he's a total dork. Like he yeah. knows so he knows so much about Lord of the Rings. It makes you want to die. I love it. It's <laughs> it's great. He was also on uh, Whose Line. Yes, he ah. was. That's right. Way, way, just, way back when. Way back then, he was yeah. barely even known as a correspondent on the Daily Show then, let alone whatever's happened since. Yeah. All right, well, time for scores. Time for scores. I'll go. I haven't gone first or I'll, even second. And I'll go second. Okay. Uh, I'll go last. I want to give him a seven point five, personally, for for what he means to me, what uh, how I like his humor. I'm gonna go to an eight though because I'm going to acknowledge that he has landed through his work in the Colbert Report. I mean one of the pinnacle like when you're a kid and you're a dr- you're dreaming as a comedian you're like i want to host uh you know a late show a late night talk show and he did it he's there and i think that's hella impressive and he continues to um just raise the equality it seems like every night and i just read a thing where like the lead he has over fallon uh is there there is a lead and it's continuing to grow mm-hmm. so it's like Yo, know, I respect that. So props. So I'm gonna give him an eight. Last uh, last I saw, he was at like four and change, like four point one, and Fallon's at like two point seven in that second place, Whoa. and that's yeah, <laughs> pretty hefty for the wow. both but major. I mean, Conan's nowhere to be seen, but he's not on a major network. Yeah, Kimmel's, table, Kimmel's yeah. not too far yeah. behind Fallon. He was like two point five, and it's hard to rank Conan against it because TBS. So who cares? Yeah, right. right. You know, we'll never really know if 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 O'Brien had gotten a fair shot at the Tonight Show. Who knows what that would look like these days? But yeah, I'm so sad. We'll never know because Jay Leno's kind of an asshole. Yep, kind of. <laughs> Story checks out. Seriously. 
Um, I'm going to go with a nine. The one thing I would encourage that we have not talked about, um, because it was really striking, despite the fact that you would think this would be more anti-Trump or whatever, he had a really long conversation with Joe Biden that I recommend people go out and watch in full. It's like 22 minutes, and it was on the late night show. It was split into pieces, obviously, for the broadcast. But just a very heart-to-heart conversation in a way that you just don't see in other TV formats very often, and certainly not in late night. Obviously, late mm-hmm. night's meant to be more lighthearted. Here's an actor, plug your project, blah, blah, blah. It was very refreshing to see. And Biden also helps with that because he's a very like stark, honest kind of guy, whether yeah. you agree with him or not. Um, mm-hmm. But a nine overall, the handful of roles are great. The Colbert Report, I even liked more than The Daily Show in a lot of respects, even though it was close. I liked both quite a bit. And I'm impressed... You can argue he's turned too much into the skid, into this Trump criticism, which is certainly valid. I think part of that stems from the fact that he needed something to latch onto that wasn't that character that he played for so long, because everybody was expecting something adjacent to that when he went into this late night role, no matter how many times he said it wasn't going to happen. So I think that's part of why he's turned too much into the skid. But even so, I think he's at least taking a more nuanced approach to it than just the on the nose jokes that he could be. So I, even with the current stuff, I still respect it. So a nine for me. Uh, Yeah, I super respect his body of work. I think he's genuinely funny. I think his heart is in the right place. I think he's super smart. Um, I honestly have no real criticisms of him at all. Like, I I totally acknowledge what you were saying, Dave. Um, But, and I don't even, I don't even watch his late night stuff, but that's not because I'm not interested in more of how I've changed my own viewing um, habits. Um, And with that in mind, I am a nine. So I am of the opinion. I loved what he did on Daily Show and Colbert Report. I thought it was really creative, and I like the character that he created in that. And the big thing that I appreciate about him is when he does put his heart into things. Um, like the interview with Joe Biden you're talking about, it's very heartfelt and I think very good because it's real. It's passionate. Um, he had an entire week when the Pope visited America a couple years ago. Um, he's Catholic and he put this whole big thing in a week long thing on his show all about Catholicism and how much he's passionate about it. And I thought it was really super heartfelt and I loved watching it because it was his own passions coming out. What I haven't seen when I have watched his late night show is those passions. It feels like he's pandering a bit to the pandering a bit to the masses, which I don't find appealing, but his body of work has been great. So I would give him an eight as far as my scoring goes, because I think he's been fantastic. It's just dropped off in the past couple of years because he's had to kind of fit into that late night talk show mold. Mm-hmm. Dave is like, I want to give him a 10, but, but the Republican <laughs> inside of me wants a six. Oh, please. So I'll go oh, with please. Uh, <sighs> Stephen Colbert, welcome yeah. to the Hall of Fame. Yay! You can join Brian Creston. You can do roller skating together it'll be yeah. fun <laughs> oh they're friends i love it be, which, which we'll song, which that song, song was it uh it was uh get lucky ah well, please just step over lucky. the body of jk rowling <laughs> on your way in she's been charred to a crisp she's been in the like gutter it, all week if you roller skate over you're gonna fall so make sure you just do a little hop over her <laughs> we took her out to the trash now just to know for the, the viewers <laughs> We did take three people that we at least considered would be decent candidates. Like, I don't think anybody expected JK was going to get a two from anyone and didn't. Right. She didn't make it, but she still got a decent score. There are four levels of this Hall of Fame. We only got into two of them because people fell into them. But I encourage our panelists or our listeners slash viewers, if they want to recommend people for us to judge, to consider that there's also a Hall of Lame and a Hall of Shame. So that if you want us to rate people who suck and put them in the hall that nobody wants to be in, that's an acceptable format for this, too. It's not just the creme de la creme. I love Again, it. Again, cool. low-hanging fruit. I'm not doing Trump. I'm not rating it. I'm not touching it. We're no, just staying away. Why would you, Dave? We wouldn't want you to... We wouldn't want to put you in that position, Dave. Besides, in 20... In, <laughs> In 20 years, when we look back on Trump as history's greatest president, then, you know, that's going to look really bad when we rate him a three. Look at the Dow Jones, guys. Just look at the stock market and the yeah. economy. Of yeah. course, according to Trump, he's already the greatest president of all time. So, you know. He was, that was before he got elected, he said that. So, who cares? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about this. We'll be here another hour. And I know. Now. Dave, don't worry. I, I, don't, I won't expose you. Your kids might watch the show someday. I don't want them to be ashamed of you. So. How <sighs> yeah, many times I've said I didn't vote for him? I did not vote for him. Doesn't matter. <laughs> True. It doesn't. <laughs> Sean's got his image. <laughs> 
All right, that's it for this episode. That's Hall of Fame. I imagine it'll come back in some form or another soon. And again, if you want to send us recommendations, know that there's a whole scale and four different wings they can go into, including one, the Hall of Shame, where we will mercilessly pee on their bodies. So I like it. That's, that's the stakes we're dealing with here. In between episodes, you can find us at our website, ObjectionNetwork.com, on social media at Team Objection, on YouTube.com slash Objection Network for new videos seven days a week. And you can send emails to the show to ObjectionNetwork at gmail.com. I just checked it for the first time in five months, and we have zero. So I'm very disappointed in all of you. See you Come next on, time. guys. What's zero? I spaced out for a second. <laughs> <laughs>